Greetings, my name is Matt Wood and I'm here at the AWS headquarters in Seattle to show you how AWS Batch works. AWS Batch is a new service we launched at reInvent this year that enables developers, scientists, and engineers to easily and efficiently run hundreds of thousands of batch processing jobs on AWS. It dynamically provisions the optimal quantity and type of compute resources based on the volume and specific resource requirements of the batch job submitted. With AWS Batch, there is no need to install and manage batch computing software or server clusters that you use to run your jobs, allowing you to focus on analyzing results and solving real problems. So I'm going to demonstrate how AWS Batch works. Here we have a set of genomes that need to be sequenced. When sequencing genomes, you generally have a few different types of processing steps. You need to do alignment, variant calling, and comparative analysis. Each of these steps can be broken into different batch processes that have differing memory and CPU requirements. With AWS Batch, you can map out each of the stages and set the dependencies. Here, we see that we can model the first stage of the genome sequencing workload. We can create two more stages of batch jobs that have dependencies against the previous stages. Now that we know how we can model batch jobs in AWS Batch, let's talk a bit about how we run the batch jobs themselves. First, we have compute environments. Compute environments dynamically provision and scale compute resources based on the volume and resource requirements of your submitted jobs. You can set configurations like the minimum and maximum number of vCPUs that we want AWS Batch to spin up. Second, AWS Batch enables you to set up queues. This is where submitted batch jobs are stored until compute resources are available to execute the job. The AWS Batch Scheduler evaluates when, where, and how to run jobs that have been submitted to a queue based on the resource requirements of each job. Each queue can be linked to one or more compute environments. Now we're going to submit all of the genome sequencing jobs into the queue. The scheduler will now evaluate the queue, and the compute environment will spin up the appropriate number of instances to handle the workload. See how the red jobs have to get processed first before the green jobs start processing? Next, we're going to set up a new compute environment. This time, it's a compute environment connected to spot instances. The spot environment can be configured to spin up spot instances once the spot price drops below 25% of the on-demand price. We can also configure it with a maximum number of vCPUs. We will set up a second queue, which will be processing low priority jobs such as report generation or garbage collection. It's low priority, so we only want to process it when instances are below a certain price. You can see that now, as the price drops below our preset threshold, AWS Batch will start processing the jobs from the second queue. Next, let me introduce you to priority scheduling. We're going to connect Q1 to Compute Environment 2, but we're going to set the priority so that it's higher than Q2. What happens now is that the scheduler will run batch jobs based on the priority of the queues. Here you see that red jobs get first priority on Compute Environment 2. Only when there is no red jobs available do the Q2 yellow jobs get processed. You'll see that once all the jobs in Q1 finish, the compute environment will start spinning down its instances back to zero. So that's it, a quick introduction of AWS Batch. Thanks a lot.